Brian, you're talking to some of the students who've seen this all happening in real time on campuses firsthand. Take it away. Yeah, shocking stuff. So we're here with six students to talk about what they're seeing and more importantly, why is it happening? So thank you for being here with us. No, let me start with you. You're at Columbia in New York. Yes. It's been three weeks now. Talk about the tone on campus. Has it changed? Has it gotten better? Has it gotten worse? Uh, the tone has been extremely unpleasant, to put it mildly. It's it's full of discord. It has not gotten better. Um, every day, I I attempt to you know start new, to move forward, uh, to look for some source of some source of positivity. And each day, I see a new a new form of demonstration, a new form of hate, a new form of anti-Semitism. Mm. Um, and it's just absolutely disheartening. This is a this is a level of of generational discord, as I was saying, that we have not seen before, and especially amongst the undergraduate students, which is, that is particularly nerve wracking to me, especially as a woman of many identities, I have always felt accepted in these yeah. in these liberal institutions and these these liberal environments very accepting and now I'm now I'm now experiencing that that is conditional and and it does not extend to my Jewish identity. What's an example of something you're seeing right now? You know, three weeks in that's really bothersome to you. Um, well, I'm sure a lot of people have seen this by now, but there is a an email circulating uh, that was sent out by the leader of one of the. Columbia clubs uh, in which she posted that at their most recent movie night event, not a political thing, uh, Zionists are not allowed. And so a student wrote back wow. explaining why that is anti-Semitic, discriminatory against all of our, our policies yeah. and values. And she wrote back with some serious, serious Anti-Semitism is uh, frankly not a strong enough word. It, I mean, Holocaust denial. That she she said that the Holocaust mm -hmm. is not special. The Jews are not yeah. special. Israel Israel and the Jews are inherent racists, which of course is disturbing to me as as a non-white Jewish person. Right. Um, and so it's it's all like that. That's it's, it's really terrible. disturbing stuff. Yeah, Jill, absolutely. I want to come to you on this. You know, you see the activism on campus, the protests. You make a really interesting point about how it seems like colleges are actually looking for those kinds of students these days. Talk about that. Yeah, I think unfortunately this is the culmination of a trend that we've been seeing in academia for a long time, which is that at elite institutions particularly, admissions offices are screening for social justice activism over intellectual merit exclusively. Mm -hmm. So what's created is a very homogenous student body where not only are students robbed of the opportunity to learn how to be nuanced, but they also don't really get the opportunity to explore the contours of their own morality mm -hmm. because they're just regurgitating an ideology that's pretty ubiquitous now. Right. And Julie, I want to talk with you about that curriculum in the <laughs> classroom. You know, we, we talk about whether students get to take the history classes that can make them informed on world events, but in so many classes today, it seems like right away students are confronted with that framework of we view the world as oppressor and oppressed, and you must do that in this class. And it's really interesting to me because they're teaching DEI, right? Mm -hmm. And they're teaching diversity, equity, and inclusion. And it's diversity and equity and inclusion except for the Jews. Mm -hmm. Anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism. Sympathizing with Hamas and calling them a resistance group when they are a terrorist organization is inherently wrong, and it's anti-Semitic. And Jewish students don't feel safe. We don't. Mm. And that's what's being taught in these schools right now. And it's unfortunate because this kind of dialogue has to change. We look to our universities for moral clarity, and they are not providing it. And, it, and that starts with language that people can understand, and that means yeah. the same thing. <laughs> Michael, you know, you, you look at professors and the role that they're supposed to play in the university. They're supposed to guide the conversation. They're supposed to help students think critically, think rationally, develop a moral compass. But, you know, you look around campuses right now and you see a lot of examples of professors who seem to be doing exactly the opposite. Talk about what you're seeing. Well, I mean, thankfully at my campus, Fordham University, we've seen no demonstrations. But yet we still see in the media there are campuses who are suffering from this. The, uh, simply put, administrators and professors, they're teaching students what to think and not how to think. Mm. I go to college because I want to get an, uh, an, edu an education and I want to know how to operate after college. And simply, that's just not what's happening. As an example, the Leadership Institute Campus Reform reports that a professor at UC Davis is targeting Jewish journalists just because they're Jewish. She's targeting them with death, 
home invasion, right. and other forms of violence. It's wrong, and it comes from the top. It needs to stop. And we saw the professor at Cornell talk about how it, it was an exhilarating experience to watch what Hamas did. Jeremy, you know, you, you've got the professors on one hand, but then you've got the leadership of the school, and you would look to the leaders, the presidents of the college, the trustees, to really set the tone and say, this is how we operate as a university body. And yet, Again, in so many cases at some of the most prominent colleges, it's crickets or it's wishy-washy statements or it's even worse than kind of middle of the road. It seems to be sympathizing with Hamas. Talk about the leadership at colleges and what you expect as a student. Well, let me just start off by saying that it's really disappointing to see, you know, Rutgers administrators and administrators across a lot of other campuses where we're seeing these pro-Hamas rallies happening, as reported by Campus Reform, it's really disappointing that we're not getting a stronger message coming out of uh, campus leadership, particularly because of the fact that this is such an important issue facing our communities today. And we can't let the left today hijack the narrative and push this narrative that somehow Israel is responsible for these attacks against mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. That's just wrong. Um, and as a result, you know, we need to look at the facts. The facts tell us that Hamas committed these terrorist attacks killed innocent Israelis, and they violated human rights. So I really do hope and pray that the entire Rutgers community and campus administrators and presidents will find mm. the decency, at least, to stand up against these atrocities, yeah. against Hamas, and actually stand with the people of Israel. JJ, you get the sense that for universities that won't do that, there are some people out there in the business community, out there in the donor community who are saying, I can't hire your students. I can't fund your college anymore because it's so antithetical to what I believe. It almost seems like we might be at some kind of tipping point with colleges and universities in America in terms of the model we've had for funding and how people get hired and what will work going forward. Talk about what you think the future of the university is if we continue to see what we're seeing right now. Based on the events of the last couple of weeks, um, it seems to me that the future of the universities in this country is extremely bleak. Uh, I say this for two reasons. The first is that the social fabric which we have presumed on university campuses until this point has been absolutely torn apart. I know now, we as Jewish students know what we didn't know three weeks ago, which is that if Hamas uh, militant terrorists were to come into our classrooms, into our libraries, and massacre the Jewish students there, our own classmates would stand up and say, that's a good thing, that's justified, that is legitimate resistance because we were somehow aiding the Zionists causes some such nonsense. Wow. So to, to see that kind of horrific moral rot on the part of our fellow students, that completely destroys any kind of shared space that we have, that's the first reason. The second reason, I think perhaps more importantly, is it shows that so many students at ostensibly good universities are simply swallowing and repeating, regurgitating absolute falsehoods. Wow. Uh, prominent among them first is that the West and anything associated with the West is colonialism and evil and should be resisted and any kind of resistance up, and, up to and including uh, slaughter of civilians is justified. Mm -hmm. And secondly, this again, this foolish, absolutely nonsensical notion that Jews are somehow foreign to the land of Israel, right. whereas in fact the Jewish mm -hmm. people have a rich 3,000-year uh, culture and history on the land There's and the away from the land. Again. And it's yeah. absolute yeah. nonsense to say that, that Israel is some kind of Western colonial imposition. So these two things, if, exactly, if students yeah. truly believe this, then that shows that the education on campuses across the country has failed. Noah, I started with you. We're just at the end of our time here, but let me ask you, What's something that you want to see, maybe that you need to see on your campus to help you believe there's a path forward for every student at Columbia or whatever the college is, not just for those with the loudest voice right now? Frankly, the adults need to step in. And what I mean by that is, especially in the undergraduate community, we are, we are upset with each other in a way and in disagreement with each other in a way that we have not been before and we are not handling handling it properly there is a ser in some cases there ha there have been violence there there's been violence uh, uh, at Columbia yeah. and 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 that's and that's not to say that there also isn't an intense subtextual level of violence within the individual schools at, at the university yeah. and so for that reason we clearly need the the administration to come down and say we are not only condemning the Hamas attacks, we are condemning the student body and the portions of the student body yeah. the that, are supporting this, uh, that are supporting this yep. attack. I mean, yeah. it's, they, need, they need to step in. The adults need to step in seriously. Yeah, uh, Madison, I'm coming back to you. I'll just say these are some smart students. They've thought about this carefully, and you can hear them. 
They're looking for the adults to step up, and the one thing they need more than anything else is moral clarity. We'll see if universities can provide that. Madison, back to you. Yeah, Brian, thank you so much. What an incredible conversation. So great to have all of them on our set with us.